don't know if I've seen a team this season that talks as much as this Maryland team. Oh. I mean, they talk the entire time on both ends of the floor. That's the mark of the great team. The Terrapins are your Big Ten champions yet again, winning 104-84. University of Maryland, Brenda Freeze, and she has had a decorated career. Coach Freeze, welcome to the podium. Well, thank you very much. Obviously a very exciting day for us to all be back in person. It's great to be able to see each and every one of you. For us, you know, we have a lot to look forward to in this upcoming season. You know, some polls have us preseason ranked number four in the country. And I think what I'm probably most excited about is, you know, having the buy-in from our players. You know, to have three seniors uh, all choose to return uh, to come back with their extra year of eligibility. Uh, feel fortunate to be able to have that. And again, to have another year with the experience factor for our younger players, uh, you know, is a big uh, push for us going into the season. We returned 93% of our scoring uh, that led the nation in scoring last year at 91 points per game. And also the team that was first in assist to turnover ratio last year. So with that many possessions, you know, to be able to secure the ball like they were able to do was a big piece to our success last season. We returned all five starters. We had six players average in double figures, and all of them return. We'll be led, obviously, by Ashley Owusu and Diamond Miller, who were named co-MVP last year in the Big Ten tournament, and also just coming off of gold medals in the America Cup in Puerto Rico this past summer. Katie Benson, our grad senior, comes back, led the nation in three-point field goal percentage last year at 50%. Chloe Bibby, uh, her experience factor, her toughness to be able to have. Angel Reese, Mimi Collins, uh, Shanice Lewis, when you talk about another senior coming off of an injury to return back to the court. So just so many weapons for us that we're really looking forward to. Uh, our, our preseason, our non-conference schedule will prepare us. You know, we play three of the top five teams in the country country this season. Uh, so all games that are going to prepare us for what will be the most difficult Big Ten season ahead. To have four teams in the Sweet 16 is huge and that experience factor is going to play a huge part of uh, who's hoisting that trophy come March. We will now open up questions for Coach. Hey, Brandon, Kareem Copeland from the Washington Post. Hi, Kareem. You just kind of touched on a lot of the things. Last year at this time, we were talking about so many newcomers, new starters, that kind of thing. Then all of a sudden, you guys went out, had all that success, and you're bringing everybody back. I'm curious, what are the conversations that you're having with the players now about these heightened expectations? Well, first and foremost at Maryland, we always welcome them. You know, we want that bar set as high as possible. The, the standard has always been set. Uh, you know, we, we're disappointed any time we, we, we lose a game. So um, for us, we, we embrace it. You know, I mean, our motto this season is complete the mission. And for us, it's, uh, you know, going as far as we can, uh, you know, each and every game getting better, building uh, upon each game that we get to play in. Uh, the schedule was created on, uh, uh, on purpose that way uh, to prepare us for March. Right up front here, second row. Hey, Coach James Boyd, Hill Review. Um, you played at the college level. You've coached at, you know, at the college level for a long time. So to have the men and women here today, um, to, to have the branding, March Madness around women's basketball, um, how significant do you think that is? And how have you seen it, I guess, change over the years? 
uh, it's huge. You know, we're in 2021, so uh, you know to finally see you know the the needle being moved. You know, when um, these young women, you know, just as I grew up, you know, had the same dreams, and now to be able to see them fulfilled, uh, to be able to see today's venue, uh, what the Big Ten has put together, has been extremely special for both your men's and women's teams coming in today. Um, and, and for the amount of time that, that these student athletes put in to finally see the exposure, to, to see the um, credibility, to, to see the equalness, you know, um, for both genders, you know, it's a, it's a huge moment in our time. Near the back. Brenda. Steve Strimming, Excel High School Sports, Hi, uh, Indiana Sports Network. Brenda, you elevated the program when you were at Ball State here in Muncie. Now you're at Maryland. I would call this program elite. How difficult is it for you to maintain an elite program? Yeah, you know, very difficult. I, I think, uh, you know, the climb to the top sometimes I think can be easy, but sustaining it, the consistency is, uh, you know, the, the hardest. And I think that's probably one of the things I take the most pleasure in is that we have been able to sustain that elite level and consistency uh, year in and year out. But, um, you know, the grind never stops. You know, it, it's recruiting. It's, you know, being able to put your players in positions to be successful. It's having a great staff, uh, which, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to have surrounded around me with great, hardworking young people uh, that want to put Maryland on their chest. So, um, you know, just proud, obviously, of what we've built and, and wanting to, get to sustain it. Right here up front. Uh, Marcus Fuller, Star Tribune. Coach, uh, you spent early in your career in Minnesota, and I was wondering your thoughts on the Final Four uh, coming to Minneapolis. Yeah, I love it. You know, it was a short stay, but, you know, I grew up in Iowa, so, you know, very close for my family and friends as well. Uh, you know, Minnesota has a special place in my heart as well, you know, of giving me the opportunity to, to be able to coach there for a season. Uh, so I can't think of a better place for the Final Four. Any additional questions for Coach? Thank you for so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Sky high expectations for Brenda Fries and the Terps heading into 21-22, and you can see the reasons why. Led all of Division One in scoring more than 90 points per game last year, and this team returns six players on that squad who averaged in double figures. Obviously, the end of the year wasn't exactly what Maryland wanted, but a top five preseason and once again, the prohibited favorite to win the Big Ten. We will stay here with the University of Maryland as we await men's head basketball coach Mark Turgeon. And for that introduction, we head back to the stage. Next to the podium will Kevin be the Moore. head basketball coach at the University of Maryland, entering his 11th season, head coach Mark Turgeon. Terps. Uh, thank you. Uh, happy to be here um, after not having this for a couple of you know, last season. Uh, it's great to be in the building. We're going to play the Big Ten tournament in, so it's, it's good to be here. Um, obviously excited about my team. Uh, added a lot of new players. Got some good uh, veteran guys coming back. And uh, we've had a great summer. We've had a great uh, fall. Uh, the guys have worked hard and probably the best thing we have going for our team right now is our chemistry. The guys really get along and, and, and they're fun to coach. So two guys I brought today, Eric Ayala, who's been a terrific player for us going into his senior year, big time score, um, multiple position guy, but to play mostly off the ball this year and need to score a lot of points for us. Um, and then Dante Scott's here. He's been a great player. One of the most improved players I've ever coached from his freshman year. Uh, Dante wasn't a great shooter coming out of high school, shot 45% from three last year in the league, which is an extraordinary number. Um, he's just really gotten better, and he's a tough guy for us. And, um, and if, what, if you don't know uh, Dante's family, their house was flooded, um, lost their house uh, September 1st, and uh, Terp Nation stepped up uh, through a GoFundMe and, and, and really did great things for his family. So really proud of uh, 
our fan base and what they were able to do for Dante's family. It gives them a chance now to get their life back together and, and uh, a little bit of normalcy because uh, they, they lost everything, lost 90% of their belongings and lost their house. So good job, Turp Nation. Thanks for stepping up. We'll now open up to questions for Coach. Hey, Mark. Um, Emily Jambaba from Washington Post. Um, I was just curious, what were those few months like in the off season when you were trying to bring in all those newcomers? And you said you liked the chemistry. So how, how has that integration happened so quickly? Well, we first of all, we try to recruit good kids. Um, and, and we were fortunate. I, I think if you watched this play last year, it was pretty evident we didn't have a point guard and we didn't have a center, um, a true center uh, that was ready to, to, to play at a high level. So. We were able to get a couple early uh, out, of, out of the portal, local kids, um, which really helped. Uh, and then we just kept trying to piece it together. Um, uh, Ian Martinez was a great get for us, um, great kid, really, really good player. Uh, and then, you know, Xavier Green late, you know, we go through the summer, do we have enough? He thinks he's going to go pro. He's been in college for a long time. He puts his name in the portal. And we studied him, we watched him, we played against him last year, and we felt like he was a good piece. So we just kept trying to add pieces. Uh, we got great depth. Uh, added Pablo in the summer, too. So, yeah, we've had, we, we got some really good depth. We got some really, we're probably as big and athletic as we've been in a while. So uh, we're faster. And, uh, and then the guys that were with us really worked hard, too. So, but chemistry's good because we have good kids. We recruit good kids from good families. And, um, and our culture is really good. So we have a great culture, and our guys buy into it uh, right away. Good to see you, Emily. Additional questions for Coach? Right up front here. Mark, with the uh, changes uh, in the transfer portal and such, and kids were able to come and go like that, is, uh, roster management has just become a huge topic, both coming and going. Um, as we go forward now, it, it, how much uh, will that start to dominate even more in regards to filling your spots as opposed to recruiting freshmen or junior college kids? Well, I, I think the portal was in an all-time high last year because it was the first year. I, I do think the, the portal is going to be a big part of, of what we – have going forward. I don't know if there'll be 2,000 kids in it again. Um, so it's it's an important piece of recruiting. Roster management is the most difficult thing that we do as coaches, uh, year in and year out. And um, you have to do a really good job of recruiting the players you have. Make sure they stay. Uh, that's important. And um, you know you didn't have to do that 20 years ago. Guys just stayed. Um, but you have to do that now. We know it's part of the game, so we work hard on that. It's a big part of our strategy. Don't keep them all. Um, and then you just try to blend it. You know, you try to get the best high school players you can, and you look at your needs, and then... Um, but I do think the portal gives you a second chance if early signing doesn't go well to, to try to fix your team. And I think that's why our league is so strong uh, this year uh, at the top. Uh, really throughout the whole league, but uh, some guys did a really nice job in the portal, and it's given them a chance to be a, an elite basketball team again. Second yeah. row here. Yes, Mark. Mike DeCourcy from Sporting News. Uh, at, at Rhode Island, Fats was the kind of point guard who had to call his own number a lot. Yeah. Uh, now he's surrounded by a lot more talented players. How is he adjusting to to being a distributor first and, and an option second? Yeah, it's a great question. So when I recruited uh, Fats, that we talked about that, and um, that he didn't need to score 17 a game, even though he's capable of getting 17 in a game uh, for Maryland or 25 in a game. He's capable of doing that. So we talked about that, and he and he he wanted that. His body was worn out. He was breaking down a little bit, and uh, he's terrific. I mean, I knew he was good, but he is a heck of a player, and he can make an impact on both ends. You know, some kids can just make an impact on one end, but he's he gets shots, his team wins every scrimmage, it seems like. Um, and then he gets two or three steals of practice just because he's so fast and anticipates well. So I knew he was good. I didn't know he was this good. And for, I always tease him, for a guy shorter than me, 
uh, he's a heck of a player. So, and he's a great kid from a great family. Do we have a final question for Coach? Awesome. Thank you for your All time right, this morning. You. Good luck this season. Thank you. Lots of work done this offseason by Mark Turgeon and staff in the transfer portal, including adding the name of all names in the transfer portal, Fats Russell from Rhode Island. Going to need to fill in for the departure of guys like Aaron Wiggins and Daryl Morsell. Maryland has finished in the top five in the Big Ten standings in five of the last seven seasons, looking to make it six out of eight coming up in 2021-2022.